Have you ever been sitting around watching a great documentary or a series on Netflix or wherever and thought, man, it would be fun to make things like that? Maybe you get all excited thinking about how interesting it would be to travel the world and constantly meet new people as a job, but then when it comes to actually choosing something to make a documentary about, things seem to slow way down. Yeah, we've all been there. Over the last 10 years of working in the documentary industry, and even more now since I've had this YouTube channel, I've had a ton of new filmmakers reach out to run their ideas past me to see if I think they would make for a good doc. And even though I love hearing from all of you, seriously, my email is in the description. Most of the time I end up having to tell people nicely that they need to go back to the drawing board. Coming up with a solid premise for a documentary can be really, really hard because if it were easy, we'd all have shows on Netflix. So how do you know if your idea is good? What makes for a compelling documentary and what are the different pieces you need to tell a story well? In this video, I'm gonna tell you the three main things you need, the holy trinity if you will, so you'll know whether or not you have a good idea for a doc. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, and on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. If that sounds like something you'd be into, click that subscribe button, because I've got new videos coming out every week. Okay, so you think you've got an amazing idea for a documentary, but before you start filming and sinking a ton of time and money and energy into it, you need to do yourself a favor and answer these three questions for yourself. I'm gonna be a sneaky YouTuber here and save what I think is probably the most important one for last, so keep watching. You didn't see that coming? But before we get into that, where do ideas for documentaries actually come from? For me, I get a lot from reading. I love reading books, both fiction and nonfiction, and also from magazine writing like National Geographic and The New Yorker. Newspapers can also be great. Or sometimes ideas come from watching other people's documentaries and you see a side character or a plot element and it makes you want to dig a little deeper in that direction. I've even got ideas while working for other people's films, like when I was shooting for The Trade and ended up making a separate short film about one of their minor characters after we wrapped. Ideas come from all sorts of places and there's nothing more exciting than that eureka moment where you realize you've just found your idea for your next project. But more often than not, just because a topic is interesting doesn't mean it will make for a good documentary. It's easy to decide that, I don't know, life on a deep ocean oil rig is interesting, but you need more than a topic to keep audiences watching. What you need is a story, and that's the first of the three points I have for you today. You might be saying, story, topic, what's the difference? The topic is the story. Sorry, but that's just not true. Topic and story are totally different things, and without a story, you don't have a documentary. One of my favorite doc series on TV right now is Last Chance You. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix, and it has some of the nicest cinematography and character development I've seen in a doc in a while, and you should definitely check it out. It's about sports teams at the junior college level and how hard it is for students, especially ones that come from poor backgrounds, to make it as an athlete. That's a cool sounding topic, but it isn't a story. A story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and over the course of it, there's usually some sort of change or resolution. A topic on its own doesn't have these things, and that's how you can tell the difference between a topic and a story at the most basic level. The topic of Last Chance U is college sports. The story is that a group of mostly underprivileged athletes have been accepted to one of these colleges in the first place, which is the beginning, then they have to fight their way up to the top over the course of a brutal season, the middle, until they hopefully get to the championship game and win or lose the end. And if they win and play well, they might attract the attention of a scout and get recruited to one of the top schools in the country, which could change their lives forever. There's the change in resolution, one way or the other. Your resolution doesn't have to be a good or happy one either. Lots of the athletes in Last Chance you don't make the cut, but even if a character doesn't get what they want, there's still a moment of resolution. Or look at Tiger King, probably one of the most watched documentaries of the last year, if not of all time. The crazy guy in his illegal zoo in Florida is a topic, but it isn't a story. But an eccentric man who opens a dodgy zoo, the beginning, develops a hostile rivalry with another big cat wrangler, the middle, which eventually leads him to being charged with murder, the end. See how that's different? So when you first have an idea for your next doc, ask yourself if you have a story or a topic. You might have no idea how it will end at this point, but you need to be able to identify a possible ending where there is some sort of change over time. I shot a baseball doc called Bad Hombres about the world's only binational sports team, and even though we had no idea if the team would win or lose the season, we knew there would be an end to the story either way. All right, you thought about it and you decided that you really are sitting on an idea for a story and not just a topic. 
So what comes next? Last month I read a news article about how the town of Lytton, BC burned almost completely to the ground last summer in a wildfire, and how even seven months later the reconstruction work hasn't even started. Lytton is only a few hours from where I live, so I started thinking about what an interesting dock that could make, how an entire town can burn up and disappear. The story might be something about the struggle of the town as they push the government to get the work started, and either they'd succeed and rebuild the town, or they wouldn't and they'd still be homeless. I figured I'd just hop in my car and drive up to Lytton and start filming. I was imagining some super dramatic visuals of charred houses and cars and how I could combine them with old news footage to start the story off, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't totally wasting my time. So I called a friend I knew who had shot there before, and I'm glad I did because he told me that actually the entire place was fenced off and there were security guards controlling access to the fire zone. There were a couple of lookouts that gave a decent view, but in general, I wouldn't be able to just wander around and film like I thought I might. He'd been able to get inside eventually, but first they'd had to hire a local producer and then make several trips to meet enough local people to eventually gain the permission they needed for filming. Access is everything in documentary, and even the best story idea in the world is nothing if you don't have access to the world. And that's going to be point number two to think about. Do you have access? For quite a few years, I worked and lived in Mexico, and I spent a lot of time shooting things with drug cartels and other pretty dangerous people. At that time, Mexican cartels were constantly in the news, and a ton of production companies wanted to come down and shoot projects. But trust me, you can't just roll up to a group of narcos with your camera and start filming. That's going to end really badly for you. Please don't do it. To make shows like that, we had to work with local producers who had contacts with people in that world. These producers, sometimes called fixers, would approach the narcos for us and explain what we wanted to do and why. If the cartels were interested, we got permission and went into film. If they weren't interested, no shoot. That's an extreme example for sure, but it's true for every story you might want to film you're gonna need to shoot what you have access to. When you're starting out, you're not gonna have teams of producers working for you. So you wanna make sure you're picking stories you actually have access to. That could be through your friends and family, like if your uncle was a cop, you might get access to a few ride-alongs for your documentary about policing, or maybe like through your work, Maybe you used to be a waiter at a high-end restaurant, it might give you access to your doc about the crazy like of chefs. I don't know. Or maybe you have an idea that takes place somewhere you don't have easy access to through your friends. In that case, you need to do some legwork and check if that access is possible. A good producer will push and push and come at the situation from all different angles to open that access up. But if you're doing this on your own, you'll need to do this yourself. I've been working on a big project for the last eight months that I can't really talk about, but even though I had a verbal agreement from the people we were filming, before my partners and I started pitching it to networks, we had to ask them to sign a letter to prove to potential buyers that we really had the access we said we did. That's how important access is. So before you start cutting a badass teaser for your next project, ask yourself if you really have or can get the access you need to make it happen. Okay, so you've got a story and the access you need to tell it. You're most of the way there, and honestly, you could probably make a half-decent project with just these two things. But really good documentaries aren't told from the point of view of the filmmaker, they're told through the voices and actions of the people who live through those events. My personal favorite style of documentary filmmaking is called verite, where you don't set anything up or recreate anything, you just follow people, fly on the wall style, and let the story unfold around you. And for that, this is the third thing you need characters. Specifically characters who want something or who want to make a change in their lives. Characters who are going through a journey or process of discovery, and if they get or don't get what they want, their lives are going to be somehow different. All good stories, period, not just documentaries, have characters who want something and experience change. Frodo Baggins wants to destroy the ring and go home, but after he's done it, he realizes he's not the same hobbit as when he started. Michael Jordan wanted to win NBA championships, and because he did it so well for so long, he's now probably known as the greatest player of all time and is worth over a billion dollars. Pinocchio wants to be a real boy. A great documentary brings audiences along for the journey as those characters experience those changes. And through them, we feel what it might be like to be someone else. So if you want your doc to really resonate with people, identifying who your characters are and what they want is super important. Spend some time before you shoot to brainstorm all this stuff. Get a piece of paper or make a Google Doc and ask yourself, do I have a story or a topic? Do I have all the access I need to make it happen? And who are my main characters gonna be and what do they want? If you find that you have all these things, chances are you found a good idea for a documentary. Now you actually have to go out and make it, which is where the real fun starts. So there we go. That's my advice on how you can know if you have a good idea for a doc on your hands. I hope that was helpful, and if it was, think about hitting that subscribe button. And if you liked that video, maybe try this other one out about why I think documentary filmmaking might just be the best job in the world. See ya!